Hi, and welcome to the latest Proactive podcast episode where we are back with Gary and Tom. Hi, guys. Hi, hello. Um, and really what we want to talk about today is there are, um, there are lots of different options out there for cloud IT infrastructure. Um, and I think SMEs sometimes struggle to really navigate the landscape and understand you know when 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 it's appropriate for them to look at hyperscalers when they maybe need to look at somebody with more of a service proposition um, and one of the things we see is often really tech savvy SMEs are typically presumed to be quite suited to the hyperscaler environment because they can understand it um, but that's not always the case yeah, so we, we have a client who we're onboarding at the moment uh, who is currently with one of the hyperscalers. Um, they're very technical. Um, they understand their own application, what that needs, um, and, and actually on the technical front, don't really need any hand-holding from us. Mm -hmm. um, the reason they're coming to us is the transparency of billing. Right, okay. So they, a great quote that they, they've given me is that... Uh, this particular hyperscaler's cost calculation spreadsheet may as well be a random number generator, <laughs> um, you know, because it is so complex yeah. that you need, you know, you need a finance degree to work out what your next month's bill is going to be, mm -hmm. um, you know. Whereas with us, we, we've got a very, very transparent billing model, and it's very simple to understand. Mm -hmm. We basically break it down for them step by step. So before they agree, sign anything, they know exactly what they're going to be paying for. Mm -hmm. um, you know, right from the different sorts of infrastructure, when they get to the services that we're providing, and they can see it in one place. Yeah, it's there. It's clear. They know exactly what it is. They don't have to spend any time thinking about that or worrying about that because mm -hmm. we've told them up front exactly what they're going to be paying. Yeah, including um, the resources, I guess, because yeah, that can often be where hyperscalers get a bit out of yeah. control. Yeah, and, and and then if we're gonna increase anything or, or something's going to change we're going to talk to them about it beforehand as well and discuss the changes so they know exactly where they're going to be mm -hmm. and then if they've got any questions afterwards as we move through the process with them they start off with me and we'd have the discussions and they've gone live and things change and we move on to our client success manager Claire who then takes over so if they've got a question they come back to a human yeah and whether it's me because we put it together in the first place or whether it's something from onwards then mm -hmm. Claire will be able to discuss it with them just to keep it easy for them, keep their mind at ease, that they're not going to be paying for things that they don't know what they're paying for or why. Yeah, yeah, and it takes all the stress out, doesn't it? Because it's uh, when you've got unpredictability of costs, especially for a, an SME, that's that can be quite painful because for, for that SME, that, that fluctuation in costs could represent quite a big margin. Yeah, and, and if their invoices are coming from different areas as well, so they've got mm -hmm. several invoices for several different things, mm -hmm. ours is all put into one place that they can, they can see it with ease and... A few of the customers have said, like, you know, actually, this is perfect for us because we're not spending time like accountants. We're yeah. concentrating on developing our business. Yeah. yeah. You know, this is what the feedback we're getting from. We just make it so simple for them. Yeah. That's, that's, that's always one of the common objections to journey to the cloud for a lot of SMEs is the, the fear of spiralling cloud costs. Mm -hmm. um, you know, with our solutions, you can very clearly see, um, you know, what they're going to be. You've got the ability to calculate if you want to up some resource, you know the unit costs. Mm. Um, so you know that this is going to have an impact in this direction. And again, we're here to support during that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, it removes that fear. So um, it's interesting, isn't it? Because SMEs, I think because they're more nimble than large enterprises, they, they have been by far the more aggressive adopters of moving to the cloud and it's it's just convenient isn't it and you know because SMEs don't want to run data centers typically um, so they have quite high workloads but their requirements obviously don't tend to be as complex as large enterprises so do you think that's another reason that they that sometimes they sort of over consume from the hyperscalers yeah, it, it can be, um, and, and again, I, I think this is where it's really important to have a good understanding of, of what those workloads are mm -hmm. going to be. Mm -hmm. And I think we've, you know, we've mentioned uh, on some other episodes around observability and the fact that a lot of SMEs um, don't have that observability, uh, and, that, and that's something that we we can offer. Um, and I think because we 
have flexibility that some of the larger organizations, some of the larger hyperscalers um, don't have. Mm. Uh, you know, we're not, when we're talking about bespoke solutions, we're not just talking about bespoke tech, we're talking about operating processes. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a couple of examples um, when it comes down to resource management is we, we have some clients who, if we notice that we're we feel there's going to be a need for additional resource. Um, we sit down, we discuss it. Uh, in some cases, the, the, re, the, the finance for those additional resources is, is perhaps not there. And so we look at other ways that we can potentially reduce workload or, or spread workload and make it more cost effective. Um, we have other clients who say, look, if we need more, give us more. Mm. We're confident that that's going to show up in the bills. We know why it's there. We know you haven't just thrown it in. There's a reason for that. Yeah. And we discuss it in the monthly service reviews. Um, so again, we, we have that flexibility where we can adapt to how our clients want to work to mm -hmm. a certain extent that you just don't get with the hyperscalers. Yeah. Um, yeah. And have you got any examples of where you've done that, where you've sort of had to um, look at bespoke requirements? Yes, yeah, so we have one particular client who have a bespoke application um, that they provide to their clients. It's grown and been developed very organically. Mm -hmm. um, and what we've discovered uh, along the journey is that um, you know, the initial solution, um, whilst it was providing them what they needed, uh, once we've been operating for a, for a couple of months, we noticed that there were perhaps some efficiencies that we could make. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, again, you know, we sit down with the client, we explain what we found. Um, we, in, in this case, noticed that we were seeing some resource spikes in a particular area. Mm -hmm. When we looked at what those were, um, we discovered that actually they would have been better suited to being stripped out to a separate lower cost piece of infrastructure, which in turn then meant they could be running 24 hours as opposed to a set period of batch processing. Oh, okay. yep. So it meant adding in additional infrastructure uh, into the solution, but the mm -hmm. end result has been that there is no longer a very small window where all these batch processes can take place um, because you're not then concerned about the resource taking away from other uh, things that are needed in the working day. So, oh, so we, again, we've managed to, to work with that client and to help them, I suppose, tune their solution to mm. better fit the actual needs. And I think, yeah, yeah with, with, with that particular client as well, it's not been a case of we're just making all the suggestions. They're coming to us with suggestions that suits their business and we're open to all that as well. You know, it's not yeah. like, well, no, this is all we do and that's all we can do. Yeah. It's like, do you know what? We're not sure, but let's figure out a way. We've yeah. got a team behind us um, uh, of the people that are looking at the solutions that can come up with all these different suggestions. And between us and the client, we get exactly what they want rather than just saying, no, you've got to do this or we can only do so much. It's like, right, let's get to a solution that suits everybody yeah. And, yeah. and mostly benefits the customer. And, and I think that's, again, another kind of key difference between us and some of the hyperscalers um, in that we have equal technical resources to the vast majority of the hyperscalers. Mm -hmm. But unlike the hyperscalers, those resources are accessible and usable by our clients. Um, so, you know, it, it's the age old adage, isn't it? If you're, you know, you're phoning a service provider and you get through to a, an IVR system, just press two for sales because eventually you'll get through to a human. That's why I always do. <laughs> Everybody does, right? Because yeah. you know it's the only way you're going to yeah. get to speak to an actual person. Yeah. We, we don't have that. We, we've got multiple paths into um, obtaining support. So as Tom mentioned, you know, you've got Tom, you've got myself, um, you have our phenomenally good um, support team who are there 24 seven, they're technical specialists, they're, they're ready to, to physically speak to people. Mm. Um, we, we don't just have this single path, you're not being forced down a particular route to get what you need. Yeah. Um, and you know, we have on, on a number of occasions uh, engaged some of our uh, very high level systems architects to, to collaborate with customers to say, is there a different way that we can do this? The, mm -hmm. the end result is what matters. Well, the, it makes the, the it more interesting for you guys too, doesn't it's, it? It's you know? really Who doesn't good. have a problem to solve? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 So um, just finally then, um, do, you, do you find, I know this is something we've touched on a little bit before, but do you find SMEs are concerned about vendor lock-in? Is that something that you see? Uh, I think they should be. 
Um, I don't think they're always aware okay. that it's a thing. Yeah. Um, uh, which, you know, it, it's a thing for all of us. Um, you know, if you have an Android phone uh, or you have an iPhone, you are locked in to a very large extent to that particular vendor's ecosystem. Yeah. Okay. You know, yes, there are migration tools that you can use, but, but really, how often do people actually go down that route? Uh, and the same can be true with a lot of the hyperscalers mm -hmm. for a couple of reasons. Um, a, uh, there is in many cases bespoke technologies in place that will only work on that particular platform. So if you have a solution that uses those technologies, that's where you're staying, unless yeah. you want to re-architect your whole infrastructure. Um, I think another area where there is distinct vendor locking is with skills. So with a yeah. lot of the hyperscalers, you have to have a reasonable level of, of skill with their platform in order to be able to operate it. Or if we're using uh, you know, a third party, that third party has to have skills in that particular platform. Mm -hmm. um, we don't use any proprietary technologies that are exposed to, to the client. So skills that exist within their organization are just as applicable on our platform as they are on, say, on-premise solutions. Mm -hmm. um, the solution that you get is transferable. So you know, if you ever came to a point where you thought, Do you know what, I want to go somewhere else, um, not only is that possible, with our platform, um, we'll, we'll help you do it. Yeah. Um, so again, we're, we're, we're wanting our clients to stay with us for the right reasons, as yeah. opposed to kind of forcing them by mm. stealth, by kind of giving them this <laughs> shiny new feature that's great, but also means you can never leave. Yes. Um, yeah. And I think when we speak to them as well, there's, there's concerns that they can't do that because they won't know how to do that. Mm -hmm. And they won't know how to use the new stuff that they're using. And, and we will again talk them through on how to do that. And we had that recently with, with one that was like, oh, we can't do that because we're used to this. Mm -hmm. So well, actually, this is an easier way and you'll see it's an easier way once we show you. Once they get you know, just initial a little, change. Yeah, yeah and a little bit, of, little bit of training on how it, and all of a sudden it's like, all right, actually, yeah, there was no fear there. But a lot of them as well don't know that they can mm. sort of yeah. chop and change, if you like, um, because they're just used to what they're always being told or expecting. Yeah. So, so... I know I said to finish up with the last bit, but actually I'm going to add a little bit more in. Um, <laughs> to finish up properly this time, if if you've got an SME founder who is looking at, okay, either a hyperscaler or a, a, a more proactive service like Proactive, clues in the name, what advice would you, would you give them? Uh, for, for me, it's around transparency. Uh, is a big one, right? So the, the word managed is a very broad <laughs> word, right? Mm -hmm. So um, always check how transparent is the provider with what you are and what you're not getting. Everybody will talk about what you are getting. Not many people will talk about what you're not. Yeah. Um, we're always very clear about where the demarcation points are. Mm -hmm. um, we've spoken about costs. Um, you need to be able to understand your invoicing and what you're paying for very, very easily. Um, and I think the biggie for me is um, how easy is it to contact this organisation? Mm -hmm. you know, can you get in and speak to a person? Do they have um, the option where you don't have to speak to a person or you can just self-serve? You know, have a look at all of those things. And what your preference is around that, I Absolutely. guess. Absolutely, mm. yeah. Yeah. I'd say as well, like like from the start, they get my mobile number, you know, so I'm not <laughs> well, going to help them tech-wise, but yeah. yeah, they've got someone to speak to and that goes all the way through um, until they're up and live and running. Mm. Um, you know, so I, I think the big thing is before making a decision, come and speak to us. Yeah. You know, we'll tell you what's out there and if we're not right for you, we'll be totally honest. Yeah. You know, there's, we don't want unhappy customers. We want to help, you know, the people do it. So speak to us and we'll freely tell you what we think the right route is. Yeah. Or maybe go somewhere else, Yeah, you know, would be the, the honest answer to it. Nine times out of 10, we've got geniuses like Gary and his team that can work a solution around it because of everything that we've got available to us, really. But yeah, have a chat with us. Brilliant, great. Well, thanks guys. I, I enjoyed that part two of helping SMEs. I think, um, I think that gives people a lot of clarity about what they should be looking at. Because as you say, a lot, a, lot, a lot of times they don't know. So thank you very much for your time today. Thank you. Thank to you. See you again soon. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs>